Once you get on board, locate all the safety equipment on the boat, inspect it for damage, and know how to use it. You should have a boat pole, a fire extinguisher, an anchor, type 2 life jackets enough for everyone on board, and one type 4 throwable, that's the square cushion. Inside your bag of life jackets, there should be five type 2 life jackets. If you are close to having five people on board, please do count the life jackets to make sure you have enough on your boat. All right, when you come on the boat, you will need to locate the safety gear. We have a bag full of life jackets. There should be one for every person on board the boat. Plus, we have a Coast Guard Type 4 throwable life preserver. And we have an anchor, anchor and road, which would be located down in the cabin. Plus, we have a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher will be located in the cabin on the bracket. And one last thing, you need to make sure you have this boat pole. Boat pole is used for fishing your dock lines out of the water when you're coming and going from the dock. Next, you can operate the engine. All right, using the electric motor, we have first the forward and reverse throttle adjustment, twisting the handle clockwise, counterclockwise. And then there's the tilting the motor into the water. First, you loosen this wing nut here. This allows the motor to slide up and down. Next, we have to push this button. I'm pushing this button, this is the tilting mechanism. This allows the motor to tilt and down into the water. When I take my finger off of this button, the motor is latched into place. Now I can steer the motor in reverse to leave the dock. I'm steering, and when I'm going forward, I'm simply using the motor for thrust or slowing down. That's all there is to it. You have to remember that the motor is only supposed to be steered in reverse. Going in forward, you're steering with the boat's tiller itself. And the motor is simply for thrust. Next, let's review the operation of the electric motor. First, turn the black collar or locking screw on the engine shaft, which allows the motor to slide up and down. While lowering the motor, tilt the shaft by depressing the locking mechanism, which is either a lever or a small black button, until the shaft clicks into place. Make sure the engine is as low as it can go and that the shaft is parallel to the boat or at a 90 degree angle to the water. Second, rotate the handle clockwise for forward and counterclockwise for reverse. Remember to use the motor to steer when in reverse and always steer using the tiller when in forward. When not using the motor, return the handle to the zero position for neutral and raise the engine out of the water while sailing. Okay, this boat, the Ensign, has two topping lifts. We have a permanent topping lift here, and then we have the one that's on the hook here. This is the mooring topping lift attached to the backstay. To loosen the mooring topping lift, you have to Loosen the main sheet so you can get it off the hook like that. Now the boom is hanging on the permanent topping lift and you're ready to go sailing. When you unhook that, you should tighten your main sheet up so that the boom is not flogging back and forth. Okay, Pete, come on up to your bow and take your bow lines off. Go ahead and throw them onto the dock for me. Okay, go back and uh, you can reset your black spring line. Just set it so the loop is over top of the cleat. That way you can easily throw it off as you're backing out of the slip. Okay, go ahead and take your stern lines off. If you do have a windward stern line, you can leave that one on. Uh, just singled up so you can easily throw it off as you're backing out of the slip, but that way it will prevent you from hitting the, lu the leeward piling. Okay, go ahead and throw your stern lines into the water and go ahead and get your black spring line. Okay, take her straight back. Make sure you are steering with your motor and you're leaving your tiller center line as you're going in reverse. Take your stern out towards the middle of the river. 
That way you will not run aground and you won't hit any boats that are also trying to come out of their slip. Once you are clear of any docks, boats, or mo boats that are moored, you can go ahead and turn around in forward. Once you are in forward, you can go ahead and leave your motor center line, take the bungee cords off your tiller, and steer with your tiller. Now that he's clear of any boats or docks, he can turn up into the wind. If you don't know where the wind is coming from, you can look at a boat on a mooring, which is always pointed directly into the wind, or a nearby flag for reference. Once your bow is into the wind, um, then you can take your sail ties off and raise your mainsail. As you're coming in, you're going to point your boat directly in towards the beach and run parallel to the dock you're docking on. Once your bow reaches the outermost piling of the slip you're coming into, you're gonna make a sharp 90 degree turn. That will center line you perfectly in your slip. Once you've completed your 90 degree turn, you do wanna adjust your motor speed. If you have a headwind pushing you back, you do wanna keep your motor on about 25 to 50% power. If you have a following breeze, you do want to put your motor on at least zero. Once your bow reaches the outermost pilings of the slip you're coming into, you do want to go ahead and put your motor in neutral, if not reverse, to start slowing the boat down. The first thing you want to do is have one of your crew members grab the black spring line that is on the shore side of the boat and put the black loop over top of the cleat. This will prevent your boat from hitting the dock. Next, you can grab your stern lines. Use your boat pole. Go ahead and center the stern of your boat between the two pilings. Then go ahead and reset the black spring line by feeding it through the center of the cleat and wrapping it over the front horn for security for the night. Then come up to the bow and do your bow lines. When leaving the mooring, note your location of your mooring as you will be expected to return to that same location. Each mooring can be identified by an alphabetic letter, which is also written on the back of your radio and safety bag if you forget. First, start the engine by reading the boat-specific operating instructions listed on the back of your chart and follow them step by step to ensure a successful start. Next, to disconnect from your mooring, locate the mooring whip, which should be sitting on the foredeck. Pull the thin line attached to the mooring whip in order to reach the mooring ball's anchor line that is clipped to your bow pendant. Release the boat from the mooring ball by unclipping the large carabiner clip from the thick anchor line and throw the mooring whip into the water to windward. Reclip the bow pendant to a stanchion for easy retrieval. Notify the helmsman that the boat is free. You must back away from the mooring ball and mooring whip in order to avoid running it over and getting it wrapped in your propeller. Be careful to avoid other moored boats around you. Another tip, outboard motor boats should keep all extra crew members in the rear of the boat to ensure that the engine will stay in the water and to provide proper propulsion and cooling for the engine. When returning to the mooring, return the boat to the same mooring you came from. Establish a heading into the wind towards the whip at least three boat lengths away by using the wheel or tiller for directional control. Have one crew member on the bow direct the helmsman and pick up the mooring whip. Pull on the mooring whip's line until you reach the thick anchor line of the mooring ball. 
Quickly clip the bow pendants carabiner to the thimble of the thick anchor line and check that the carabiner is in the closed position before letting go of the line. Place the mooring whip on the deck and secure the very end of the mooring whip line to a bow cleat so the line is slack. This will prevent the mooring whip from blowing off the boat into the water. Ensure that only the thick bow pendant and anchor lines are holding the boat's weight, not the thin mooring whip line as that will break. Shut down the engine, secure the wheel or tiller. For a diesel inboard motor, turn off the batteries. If outboard equipped, lift the engine out of the water and close the safety valve located on the fuel tank. Gather all gear from the boat, including garbage, your porta potty, and the waterproof bag with VHF radio, chart, and the key. Secure the main halyard, flake the mainsail, and put on the cover. Close and latch down all windows and hatches, and then put in your companionway boards. Secure the jib sheets with several turns around the forestay, and then cleat them. Lastly, Call Nelson Sailing Center on channel 79 for a pickup via the tender. If you have paid the $15 fee for a porta potty, feel free to grab one out of the shed. The clean ones are always located inside the shed. Make sure you grab baby wipes from the office and you can put it in this black cart to wheel it out to your boat. The operation of the porta potty. What you first want to do is prime the pump and then there is a button on the front to release the water. Once you have used it, you want to pull the lever in the front to release all the fluids into the bottom. Then make sure you close it again so nothing comes back up. Once you are done with your porta potty, please do remove it from your boat and then we just want you to leave it outside of the shed and we will take care of cleaning it for you. If dangerous weather conditions appear, lightning, fog, or excessive wind greater than 25 knots, please contact Nelson Sailing Center and return immediately. Since you have your radio off, we can't call you. So you call us, let us know that you're safe and that you're on your way back in. Otherwise, we'll assume the worst and we'll come looking for you. In the event of any malfunction of the boat, including taking on of water, mechanical and hardware breakdowns, or running aground, Please contact Nelson Sailing Center immediately for assistance and do not enter into any agreement with any commercial towing or salvage company without our express consent. If you do sign or agree to any such agreement, you will be held liable for all costs incurred. Nelson Sailing Center would like to thank you for watching our video. Have a great sail and be safe.